Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. Now we're out here in Monterey County, that's the Monterey Bay way out there in the distance and this is the Bayonet course here in Marina, California. This place is a gem, 7,100 yards of hilly terrain and tough, tough golf. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe down below and if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see you out there on number 10 a long par five up the hill. Here we go. Nearly a mirror image to the first hole and running right alongside of it on the right, this 10th hole is gonna be a par five diving down off the tee and rising back up into the green. Now the trouble off the tee is that bunker down the left and the forest that is pinching in off the right and those overhanging limbs will catch any kind of big shots that are airing down the right hand side and you can guess what my shot might be off the tee as we climb the hill avoid that bunker down the right and land it somewhere up here on the right half of the fairway to give yourself a great look at this green perched up here on the left side of this approach that bunker should not come into play if you're playing the angles properly and we're facing a target bullseye pin today. Now, unfortunately, this drive drifted a little bit off to the right hand side, caught the limbs of the trees and knocked right down here in the rough. The ball was well above my feet and I'm just gonna be laying up here with a six iron up the hill. That's my 200 yard club. I'm trying to lay it here to about a 40 yard chip. That's my comfortable range here for a nice little waist high chip that goes about 40 to 45 yards and checks up nicely. That one nearly went in the hole, but I left it six feet underneath the hole for birdie. Now, after not converting on nearly any putts on the front nine, it was nice to see the first birdie of the day finally drop. Now, the holes here on the back nine are about to get very severe. The 11th hole here drops heavily off the hill down into this fairway, about a 10 yard drop. Snake your drive in between those two fairway bunkers and you'll find yourself only about 100 yards away from this green that wraps way around to the left-hand side. Now I had to club down to the three wood to avoid going through the fairway, and I still turned it over, over the left-hand fairway bunker, and found the fairway here about 60 yards short of the green. Now this one I need to take up to about shoulder height to get it to go about 65 yards, it stopped on a dime, another one from six feet, and that one just had a little bit too much steam on it. A nasty lip out to avoid back-to-back -back birdies, and we're on to the 12th hole. 420 yards heading right back up that hill you just came down on number 11, and that fairway bunker on the left-hand side will serve as a giant wall of sand off the tee shot. Make sure you clear that off your tee shot if you can, and you'll find yourself about 150 to 200 yards into this green that's sitting way up on the hill and back on top of another bunker. Now I was trying to just hit a stick straight drive here. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to go through the fairway and well, I did. I couldn't quite get the camera level, but I tried. This ball was way above my feet. I felt like I was playing baseball again with that ball up about knee height. A full gap wedge sent this ball to the back of the green up on top of a tier. And this putt was very quick coming all the way down that slope. I thought I had enough room on the camera to catch any putts that I hit, but it was right next to it and I could just roll it in from about six feet. When you see the line, just step behind it and roll it in. Lucky number 13 is gonna be the hardest hole on the back nine, a very narrow par four. It's gonna be difficult because of the length, 480 yards from the tips, but it is downhill 
on the second shot. Once you pass these two fairway bunkers that really neck that fairway down, the fairway will start to head down the hill, about a five to six yard adjustment all the way down into this green, which is ultimately perched up above all of the surroundings. Those bunkers are really, really deep. Trying to play the safety cut off the tee and thread the needle here through the trees, I was able to find the right hand rough and find some wildlife here along the side of me. A group of bachelor deer, all males, heading out and just, I guess they're looking for some lunch. A smooth 8-iron, my normal 175 club, trying to push it to 180 yards, and I couldn't quite do it. A big slope in this green caught it back down to the front of the green. But I was able to hit a great lag putt from about 50 feet up to about 2. A comfy tap in par on the hardest hole. We can keep ourselves right at even par, heading to the first par three here on the back nine. 14 heads back up the hill, 192 yards, just slightly up, about three to four yards of adjustment. And there's plenty of trouble with those two bunkers. And with this green sitting at a diagonal, you really got to get your distance correct. Now a smooth eight iron trying to go 175 yards to 180 yard flag. Five yards short of it was perfect just underneath this flag and a makeable one here from about 20 feet. Oh man, just a bit short. Another par staying comfortably at even par with four holes to play. Two par fours, a three and a five to finish us up. And they all are really different, dynamic, and turn every single way. First, this 15th hole is gonna be straight off the tee with just this fairway bunker on the outside of the dog leg. And as we approach the green, the hole will twist around to the left-hand side, revealing the green plateaued up above and protected by that left-hand bunker and that beautiful cypress tree. A position hole for sure here. Two iron off the tee, and we're looking for a short club into the green. We got a gap wedge from 135 to a middle left hole location, perfectly right on top of that bunker. I took an aggressive line, and this ball bounded past the hole and up onto the top tier of the green. Another one from 50 feet, trying to lag it all the way down there. And I left myself a slippery one from four feet, but it's always nice when you're able to knock those one in as we head to the last par four of the day. Heading way back up the hill and to the right this time, you're gonna have to thread another drive between a set of bunkers. And even though the, on the card it's less than 400 yards, adjusted up the hill, it definitely will play more. Try to hit your drive close to the right-hand side of this fairway. Everything down the left is nothing but trouble, and everything on the hill wants to kick it down that way. The green is perched up above. Once again, the hill on the right will be your friend. Now here I tried to hit the cut once again, but I double crossed this one, turning it over to the left and splashed down right into the sand. Now here I had 140 yards, which should be a gap wedge, but I clubbed up to my pitching wedge and just swung easy, trying to put this one in the middle of the green. I was not gonna go flag hunting for this back hole location out of the bunker, and that was not a great lag putt. Had to line up the six footer, but I saw the line and just knocked it in for another par. And this beautiful 17th hole sitting up here on top of the hill between the trees. 
and we just head down right off the hill, 225 yards from the tips. It's going to play about 15 yards down the hill, and that flag had not been moved for me yet, and it got moved right to the middle of the green. Now trying to flush my 205 yard six iron here, and I flushed it indeed long and left of the green. We're gonna have to get up and down here for par for the first time on the entire back nine. Not a great chip shot, leaving it here to about four feet, but I didn't have my putter with me. It was over next to the camera, and I felt like it was close enough. So another one knocked in for par, and we're gonna stay at even par, heading down to the last hole. A very gettable par five, staring right down back at the ocean in the distance. This is heading downhill all the way to the green, and you're gonna have to thread your drive over that bunker on the left, because if you're on the right, you will have no shot into this green. All those trees on the right is gonna protect what this hole does as it bends all the way around and up to this perched green up on top of all of those bunkers. Look at how gorgeous this is finishing this course. Ocean views in the distance, a reachable par five. It's time to go for it. Playing the cut once again, I'm just gonna be aiming over that bunker knowing I could fly it. The GPS said it was about 280 to carry it, and that was no problem for me. A five iron from 225 yards, that should be a perfect number for the club. And this one hit the green and bounded over as it came in from a very hot angle. Down in this chipping slope back down below the green. But it was a nice mowed down area and I was able to get the club on the ball and give myself a look here from 20 feet for birdie on the last hole. That would have been nice to shoot under par on vacation, but I will take a comfy tap in par any day of the week. Just couldn't convert that birdie on the last. Ah, that's just the way things go. We'll see you on the next one. Later.